The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, who at best, if he wins, knows the thrills of high achievement, and if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. When you're looking at this great panel on the side right here, there's a computer system inside there. That's well, I'm here today to educate the children that there's another source of water in the, that uh, we have for drinking, which is purer than anything that we can find on this earth. It's absolutely renewable and it comes from the air. It teaches the children engineering, it teaches them science, and it teaches them sustainability. At the same time, it gives the children uh, the, a way to look at somebody like me to realize that they can do it achieve anything that they put their minds to do. Water and sanitation, which is what we're all working on. We we're working with sustainability, and one of the main goals is clean water and sanitation number six. Moses was somebody we met about two years ago when we started sustainability. Uh, we found out that he was in Puerto Rico helping out with Elon Musk and Tesla, giving solar and water. We found out that he was in Flint, Michigan, and our students were working on it. So when Moses found out that all our kids were working with a curriculum of sustainability through clean water, he said, I gotta go down there. I gotta go out there with my machine. Uh, the atmospheric water project and so we planned it out and what's cool about it is that our kids are not just spectators it's part of the curriculum the project they're all part capstone of it right? projects. capstone projects all of that stuff it's a it's a unique opportunity for our students to see that they, that this is real that that there are passionate people that they can change the world they can be like mr west passionate and drivers of, of climate change and, and all the global goals It was an awesome and a great event for our students to be able to see the innovation and the ideas that can happen when you put your thoughts together, when you put science and, uh, to practice, and it gives us also an opportunity to be able to see the importance of water and how we want to continue to conserve water and use it uh, properly to, uh, to benefit uh, all of us. You're not limited by, uh, by anything. It's all about your determination and drive and how hard you want to work. That's uh, it's a message that uh, resonates with kids. They need to, to see somebody who's uh, actually done it for the future. This future is sitting right here, out here, and that's why I'm here. I'm absolutely thrilled and happy to be here, and the students are absolutely fantastic, and I live for this stuff. In tonight's Tech Tuesday, a step forward in an invention that could bring fresh drinking water to anywhere Atmospheric Water Generations Technology has developed a water generator that is able to produce over 900 gallons of fresh, clean water a day pulled right out of the atmosphere. We speak to Moses West, CEO of AWG Technology, and discuss their biggest innovative water generator that has the power to rely solely on humidity. Uh, AWG Technology is a company that I started uh, a few years ago, and basically what I was doing was I was looking for a way to provide water to the people of Texas because I knew the climate change and global warming was something that was happening very rapidly. It's getting close to the point where it's it's like groundwater. See, when you take a, uh, say if you come in and you put in a well and you drill it down and you start pulling, you're dependent on the level of the water in the ground, okay? But in the in South Texas, along the Gulf Coast, we have so much humidity in the atmosphere, you can't just pull your well up and take it with you wherever you want to go. But here's a machine that can produce 30,000 gallons of water a month that you can just close up and move it as you need it. I graduated from college here, and uh, when I had to get this idea off the ground, I had to go someplace where I knew how to get around. Okay, I know my state, I joined the military here, and uh, I, I knew how to, uh, to get this, this process moving. I am a certified U.S. Army Ranger, class 1481. I joined the military here, I was an infantry officer for three years before I became a pilot and became a test pilot. So taking aircraft apart front to back, putting them together, taking them out and flying and hoping they didn't come apart. And so I went to school here at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio. And this is where I decided to do it. This is where I feel more comfortable. And this is where there's a great group of very well-educated people that would understand what AWG technology is all about and what we do. And that's the reason success so far is because you've got to find the forward-thinking people to move this technology forward. Enough damage has been done to the ocean already with, with pollutants, plastics, and everything that we do to the planet. We need to start thinking of new technologies moving into the future that are eco-friendly, that sustain us without damaging our environment any more than it's already damaged. It's
Thank you, everybody, for being here. On the campus of Texas A&M. I'm really looking forward to uh, your presentation. A presentation that could change how all of us think of water. I've made over a million gallons of water in the state of Texas by myself. Moses West has been working on taking water right out of the air. A week ago. He brought his technology right here to KVU. And now that we've made the new developments to the technology, we've reduced the energy consumption by 10 to 15 fold. What is the limit to the size that we can build it? Right now, the one that, I, the one that I've designed now is 800 square feet. Now he's hoping A&M's AgriLife Extension can help find not only the best uses, but also more funding. But right, um, we'll, we'll need to uh, talk to Vice Chancellor. Par Rosen is the interim director for the extension. I, th I think what's next for, next for us is to come together as a team and put together a proposal and take this forward. If it can scale up to produce literally hundreds of millions of gallons of water, it's a game changer. To get to scale, we really need to be able to produce water at a much more significant level than what we're talking about. Those here discuss its use in agriculture, livestock, and especially for human consumption. We're never gonna run out of water. Anybody tells you that you're gonna run out of water, they don't understand science. Both Rosen and West say it's time to change how we look at water. Now we have a technology that we're gonna develop here at Texas A&M that's going to make it a usable source for everybody. Hey. Hurricane Maria's winds made quick work of Puerto Rico's trees and roofs torrential rain has flooded streets. Maria made landfall early Wednesday on Puerto Rico's southeast coast as a powerful Category 4, then spent the day clobbering the rest of the island. With the storm still raging, few people ventured out. Debris flew past cameras, and signs were easy targets for 140 mile per hour winds. Part of the island may see up to 25 inches of rain, raising the threat of mudslides. We can save lives. And Puerto Rico's governor, who went door to door yesterday, urging people to get to safety, says more than 7,000 people have gone into shelters. I've passed through hurricanes, but this one, it's gonna be very hard. Evacuees in this hotel had to move downstairs into the lobby, then into an emergency stairwell. The power is out across the island, and there's no timetable for getting the lights back on. Maria may have been the final blow to the power company's already crumbling infrastructure. We're getting our first look at the island of Dominica, one of Maria's first stops in the Caribbean. The storm turned deadly there and has knocked out communications to the entire island. People are cleaning up on the island of Guadalupe, where Maria also claimed lives and damaged homes. David Begno, CBS News, San Juan, Puerto Rico. At the White House tonight, President Trump taking aim at Puerto Rico, home to millions of Americans as they were staring down a natural disaster. The president calling Puerto Rico, quote, one of the most corrupt places on earth. His Democratic rivals now firing back. This is the Trump administration is also choosing at the height of the hurricane season to divert millions in FEMA disaster funds to border security. ABC's Kira Phillips is at the White House. As Puerto Rico braces for Hurricane Dorian, President Trump sounding annoyed. Wow, yet another big storm heading to Puerto Rico, he tweeted. Will it ever end? The president has railed against the island ever since Hurricane Maria when he tossed paper towels to storm victims and complained about the cost. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack. Today, with storm preps underway, he blasted the island as one of the most corrupt places on earth, adding, I'm the best thing that's ever happened to Puerto Rico. His Democratic opponents speechless. It's bizarre. The comment's bizarre. He's the best thing that happened to Puerto Rico. The president's message to Puerto Rico, FEMA and all others are ready and will do a great job. When they do, let them know it and give them a big thank you. Not like last time. I don't know. It's just something missing. He lacks the ability to have empathy or sympathy um, or concern. What, what is wrong with this person? All right, Kira Phillips joins us now from the White House. And Kira, with the hurricane season in full swing, there's news tonight the administration is transferring more than $100 million from FEMA's disaster relief fund to support the immigration crackdown at the border. That's right, Tom, but FEMA insists it won't hurt emergency response efforts, saying in a statement they will still have enough money to, quote, support operational needs. We're calling him Moses with the water. I've had to live with this name Moses for a long time. It took a little bit of time to grow into it. It's not lost on me. <laughs> you may remember the story we released last month as part of our KVU profile series. This inspiring Austinite is trying to end drought. He has developed a technology that literally creates water out of thin air. It's a machine that is designed to take the H2O molecule 
out of the air and that's it. Moses recently founded the Water Rescue Foundation to put this technology in the hands of people who need it the most. First stop, Puerto Rico. Why do you feel the need to take this technology there to Puerto Rico? This is a prime example of where this can be used. All the water in Puerto Rico has been contaminated. I don't want to celebrate the holidays when I know that so many Americans in Puerto Rico are going through this and I have a technology that can help them. This just doesn't help your bottom line. This is something that gives people hope. Hope is something Puerto Ricans need with most of the islands still without power and clean water after this hurricane season. You may be asking yourself, how will this work? Moses thought of everything. With the units in Puerto Rico, there's two ways you can power it. You can power it from the grid or you can power it for, from its own internal diesel engine. It's getting over 30 gallons of water per gallon of diesel. Well, you're talking about a Christmas present for an, uh, a group of people that need it desperately. It's the least that we can do. The biggest response has come from people in the outlying areas where FEMA hasn't reached them yet. No one's reached them. They found out about the, uh, the KVU interview and their relatives here got in contact with me. They were saying, if you can, whatever you gotta do, please get this technology there. there. This isn't going to be over. This is going to be an ongoing situation in Puerto Rico for years to come. Do you feel like this is gonna be your legacy? Mm -mm. I never wanted to be famous or anything, but if it's a legacy that uh, does some good, yeah, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that. Today is Moses West Day in Austin. It's a name you may have heard before here on KVU. He is the Army Ranger who has technology to capture a large amount of clean, usable water from the air. Moses showed us the water generator last year before the trip to help the storm-damaged island of Puerto Rico. Now he and that machine have finally arrived. Brandon Jones joins us now, and Brandon, you spoke with Moses today. Yeah, I did, Mike and Quinn, and he tells me he is happy to be in Puerto Rico after months of planning, but the situation is more dire than he thought. Moses West's mission in life is to help others. Every day he tries his best to make a difference in the world. This system here, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's helping some people. It's, it's, it's helping a lot of people. This is a water generator. Moses has developed a technology that literally creates water out of thin air. So everybody's learned now that when you come up, it'll gravity feed out. And we're doing that to conserve power. One of those people benefiting from it is Michael Barber, who lives in Puerto Rico. It's hard to describe what it's like to live without water and having to boil water every day just to make your coffee. If you don't have a swimming pool just to flush a toilet to get water is beyond anything you could ever imagine. West and the water unit are stationed at a VA hospital in Isabel Sugunda. It's one of the hardest hit areas. Strong winds and rain from Hurricane Maria destroyed the hospital there. But many times it's it's children, families with their children with uh, gastrointestinal problems. And many people here, this is a cancer hotspot, and you'll see lots of people with uh, different diseases that uh, are, are, water, are water related. With limited electricity on the island, Moses is relying on it, even though he can use power from its own internal diesel engine. The first thing that people ask me, especially the, the, the little people that live, that live here that are born here, they say, are you gonna leave us? And I say, no. I said, how long are you gonna be with us? I said, until I get the job done. It's that job of serving others that led the city of Austin to proclaim February 6th as Moses West Day. Moses says he's grateful, but he believes the work is far from over. So Moses says that water generator that you just saw is going on a solo array. The machine will be able to produce 10 to 14,000 gallons of water a week from sunlight and save on fuel. And we'll have more about the Water Rescue Foundation on our website. Clean drinking water, a natural resource we often take for granted near the Great Lakes. But Moses West knows a water crisis is quietly growing. Everybody knows we're running out of water. A problem the retired ranger spent the past four years working to eliminate. All the water that we need it, it exists right here in the air. He believed so strongly in that idea. In 2015, West invented an atmospheric water generator, or AWG, a machine that takes in air and turns it into drinking water. We're at the place now, I think, making 50, 100, 200, 250,000, a million gallons of water at an incredibly low energy consumption. I think cheap, cheaper than groundwater by far. Uh, cheaper than desalination. So far, 12 of these AWGs exist. West planted them in three areas, including the Bahamas, Puerto Rico, and Flint, Michigan. 
fact, I need to engage with the people here and I need to show them what, I, what this particular machine does and they need to understand that it is their machine and I am here for them. West says his AWGs are federally approved and the water quality is also tested by the Colorado Water Authority. It's clean, it's, it's good enough to drink, no bacteria or anything in it. And the reason that we go through the filtration process so as soon as you turn it on, it, it, it starts making water. You may be wondering how these atmospheric generators are tied to Wisconsin. Most of West AWGs were manufactured right here in Manitowoc. And the people of Manitowoc should be proud. Just one unit provides a city with hundreds of gallons of clean water. The best part, it doesn't cost residents a penny. West works with organizations like the Water Rescue Foundation to cover the cost. So far, the response in the community has exceeded his expectations. And they were very happy that somebody actually cared enough for them to come to jump over the bureaucracy, come to a private piece of land and do this thing. Right now, his priority is planting these AWGs in Flint, helping our neighbors. He Today, Barack Obama gave the good housekeeping seal of the president to the troubled waters of Flint, Michigan. And Jerika Duncan is there. Can, can I get some water? Before a crowd of a thousand. I really did need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. President Obama took a sip of Flint's filtered tap water, assuring the people there that he cares. I've got your back. Not too long ago, I received a letter. The president singled out eight-year-old Mari Kopany. Mr. President. She wrote him a letter in March, expressing her concerns about the water. How would you describe the Flint water? It's nasty. Why is it nasty? It gives you better rashes and headaches. Flint's water crisis began two years ago, after the city switched its water supply from Detroit to the Flint River to save money. The water wasn't treated for corrosion, causing lead to leach from aging pipes. Three government workers have been charged with misconduct and conspiracy to tamper with evidence. One of them was arraigned today and pleaded no contest. Though officials now say filtered tap water is safe, many, like Paris James, don't believe it. When they said it was OK, and what you refused to pay your water bill. Mm -hmm. Why pay for poison? Today, the city has handed out more than 24 million bottles of water and over 100,000 filters. Scott, the mayor here, says she wants to replace all of the pipes, but right now there just is not enough money to do that. Eureka can no longer provide in the city. And they decided the city could save money on water. Flint would stop buying water from Detroit and join a new regional water system. And as a temporary measure, Flint would use water from the Flint River. The switch happened in 2014. Here's the Flint. Uh, yes. Flint, Michigan is now a symbol of industrial decline with high poverty and crime rates. And now a new danger. It's water. Melissa Mays, once a healthy mother of three, blames her family's recent health problems on the city's water. It was in the fall of 2014, we started to lose our hair, all five of us. And we started developing rashes on our arms and our face, and it wouldn't go away, and it hurt. So, you know, we'd ask questions, and they'd tell us, oh, the water's just a little harder. It's fine. Hey, guys, I want you to come in here and get some water. But it was far from fine. Her children's blood tests revealed high exposure to lead. So how did Flint's water supply become contaminated? To save money, the city stopped pumping water from Detroit and started pumping it from this, the Flint River. The problem is it's a lot more corrosive, damaging Flint's aging pipes and leaching lead into its water supply. The state didn't acknowledge there was lead in the water until September, a year and a half after the switch, and they didn't ask for government help until last week. President Obama has now declared a state of emergency. We found some really kind of hot pockets where the lead levels um, were the worst. The pediatrician who helped expose Flint's lead problem said residents would live with the consequences for the rest of their lives. It affects their cognition, so their thinking. It drops children's IQ. It drops their IQ points. So imagine what this has done to an entire population. We have shifted that IQ curve down. We need to get these out of the ground. In a largely black city, a sense of betrayal and anger. Filmmaker Michael Moore said what many were thinking that this would never have happened anywhere else. It's not just a water crisis. It's a, it's a racial crisis. It's a poverty crisis. Where this came from, started. Relying on donated water, residents fetch all the bottles they can carry, a routine that's wearing thin, but one they'll have to get used to. It may be years before the water in this American city is safe to drink again. Uh, when this first happened in Flint, one of the things that I first thought about was everyone's here saying that, uh, well, there's no water. Yeah. The water's contaminated. 
it's hot as heck here in the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm trust me, I can tell you, I'm here. Yeah. And it's you get rain and it's humid. So if you look at it from a scientific point of view, strictly scientific, it is so simple. We have something that's called the hydrologic cycle. The hydrologic cycle is what we're experiencing today. Uh, the rain is coming down, the rain is going to evaporate, the rain is going to go back up in the sky, the rain is going to travel over there, it's going to hit a hill or something like that, and then it's going to rain again, it's going to come back down and evaporate. Go to the ocean, flow around. That's a hydrologic cycle, that's a circulatory system of the Earth. And so the water of that system comes in three forms. This is going to be so simple, I, I hope it shocks you. I really do. Three sources of water, it comes that way. It's been that way for billions of years. We have the same amount of water today that we had from billions of years ago when water was forced, first brought to this Earth. The same amount. It does not change. That water comes in a liquid, it comes in a solid, and it comes in a gas. It doesn't come in any other way. Liquid, solid, gas. Those are the three states that water exists in on the earth. The solid state of water is in ice, and that's in two places. Two places. Glaciers is one. North Pole, South Pole, polar ice caps. The bottom of the ocean, there's some frozen spots in the ocean. And then the rest of the water is liquid form. But all of that water got to be in the, in the solid state or the liquid form by traveling through the, through the, uh, from the surface of 10,000 feet in what's called the troposphere, where all of this water travels. So that's where the gaseous water travels. So right now, from the surface to 10,000 feet, there's this whole source of water that we stand in every day. And the only thing that we needed was, we see it in condensation. We yeah. see it when your air conditioner drips. We see it on the glass that you sit on the table. And so the only thing I did was come up with a very efficient mechanical process to take it out of the gaseous state. Hmm. So what I do down at the surface level with this technology is the same thing that's done up in the clouds today that made it rain. So what's happening up there, I'm doing it ground level and it's raining inside of that machine. Wow. They drained fuel, uh, they added something to the coolant lines, they played with the electronics, and that's not typical vandal stuff. Less than a week after bringing free water to Flint, Moses West says the green machine he designed to do just that was vandalized. Once they broke into the machine and uh, uh, they destroyed the, the generator, very technical, they knew what they were doing. It wasn't just, you know, random vandalism, not at all. Uh, they destroyed the battery, uh, they put metal in the fuel system. I saw that when I was cleaning the fuel filter. West is a military veteran who travels across the country to areas in crisis, bringing a machine he designed like this one that literally makes fresh water out of thin air. He put the green machine out for people along Saginaw Street on Thursday and was hoping to make a big impact. He says before the vandalism, they were giving hundreds of people free water every day. You got to look at uh, I'm making anywhere from 1,200 to 2,000 gallons of water a day and give it away for free. That's a that's, that's a lot of that's a lot of money out of somebody's pocket someplace. What? West says he hopes to have the green machine back open and working again soon with some anti-vandalism features added as well. It actually sits in the air. I set it on the ground because it was, the ground was a little bit unstable for it to sit on the legs. But now I've got all support for the legs. All 21,000 pounds though, it'll sit up in the air and make it uh, harder for people to get to the do devious things to the machine. In Flint, Rachel McCrary, WNEM TV5. Shotzi, I wanted to ask you something um, about your article. You said that the ma majority of current investigations and FOIA, uh, Freedom of Information Act requests yes. and subpoenas, are not looking in the right place. T explain to me what you mean, because obviously there are people doing investigative work on this issue. Yes. Now they are, they have in the past, but you're saying eh, eh, you're overlooking something. I think they're underlooking something. I think that if they just focus on Flint and who knew what when, I mean, you need to back up and look at the bigger issue about how Flint got committed to something that A, they didn't need, B, that didn't make sense, and that C, is going to hobble their economy further. I mean, the thing about, the thing about KWA in reading their incorporation documents is that it was supposed to be for a lot of people. It was supposed to be for several different counties. The, the membership of the board of, of that organization clearly lays out that right from the beginning almost, like three months after it was formed, that they wanted, they planned to sell water, a lot of water to someone else. And it was other than citizens. So I really think people need to focus bigger and broader. And so I can't figure out how much further back this goes because there is, um, going to be potentially a, a very deep uh, waste site for nuclear waste um, on the other side of the lake 
in Canada. Then Trans Canada is trying to come down with pipelines and we have Veolia Water, which is like the, in the top three biggest uh, water privatization companies in the world. They have been embedded in Michigan water politics. And they also definitely have very deep pockets. And I Prosecutors are dropping criminal charges against eight officials involved in the Flint, Michigan water contamination scandal. They say the investigation was botched and I've seen it, uh, I've read some of it, and it's fine. Yeah, I don't believe it. No, no, I don't believe it. Twelve people died in Flint from Legionnaire's disease five years ago. That's when the city was using improperly treated water from the Flint River. The supply was also contaminated with lead at that time. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself in a worthy cause, who at best, if he wins, knows the thrills of high achievement, and if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat.